Uh, what do you know about where he would hang out downtown? He used to hang, according to, according to informants, he used to hang around the Greyhound bus depot, 6th and Los Angeles. The, the one on 6th and Los Angeles. When he was on 6th and Los Angeles, he used to hang out there. That was his comfort zone. He was a street person, hung out with all the other street people down there, and he had a, he kept a locker. That's where he used to keep his kill kit. Uh -huh. He kept the locker inside there. That's where he kept his guns, his black jacket, his clothes. Yeah. We called it his kill kit and a duffel bag. And uh, when he got arrested, he had the uh, receipt. As well as we did a search warrant, we got all the stuff out of the locker. Wow. I want to clarify, when he came back on that final day on August uh, 31st, 1985, uh, Phil Carlo tells me that he arrived at the station down on 7th, down by uh, further east, the, the new one, the new no. station. No. Because that photo was was uh, portrayed in his book, and I and I asked him about that. I said that station wasn't even operating. Then. I didn't think so. No, it wasn't I, even there. It was right there at Sixth and Los Angeles. That's what. I, thank you for clarifying yeah. that. Um, so, did he? Did you ever learn from him? Uh, you know where he hung out downtown. Where did he stay? Or, or did he talk about places? Different flop houses around here. Different, just Skid Row hotels. Uh huh. And he, and he just get around town in his stolen cars and just cruise around wherever. He had one car that he bought later on in the during this uh, reign of terror. He bought a uh, Grand Prix. Yeah. And he used it one time. Uh huh. What can you tell me about the timeline on that last day when he showed up at the station and uh, he, Elena he's, Espinosa, contact the guest, please. Elena Espinosa, contact the guest. He realizes. His photo was plastered all over. Now he's been identified. No, he hadn't realized that yet when he came in. Uh -huh. That morning, he found out. He was actually en route during the night. Yeah. The photo went out, so he hadn't seen it until he got into the bus depot that morning. And I tell people it was kind of like, if they remember their history in high school better than I did, the Trojan horse theory, where the Trojans built this great big ho horse made out of wood when the Spartans came. Then it's surprised they got it from the inside. Yeah. Well, our informants told us you're not going to catch him around a bus depot. And the guy made sense. He says, because you're going to put undercover cops down there. Undercover cops may dress dirty, but their teeth are clean. They don't smell dirty. Their hair is not dirty. Well, you know, right. everything. He says, Make them, in, make them out easy. They'll stick out like a sore thumb. So we had cops all around that place. We used uh, LAPD's SID team. And so Richard came in. They're looking for him from the out to walk into the bus depot. And we knew that that's where he hung out. We knew that's where he liked to buy weed. And so we had cops all around the depot. What we did not know... He'd actually been cited on Wednesday the 28th oh. for riding a motorcycle without uh, a license. Oh. And But we didn't know, they didn't know, we didn't have an identification on him, so he got cited right there. And he took the motorcycle to Arizona. The motorcycle broke down. He told the trucker, hey, give me a ride into town. You can keep the motorcycle. So he took him into town. He went looking for his brother. Right. Brother wasn't there, so he got on the Greyhound bus, and he came back. We are looking for him to go on foot to the bus depot. Right. He comes in the bus. He's inside the horse. Right. He gets out. He looks. He says, there's too many people around here. Something's wrong. He goes out the way the bus came in. Doesn't go out through the regular passenger doors. Went down the down ramp, that ramp that the buses come up? There's... There wasn't a ramp. I don't believe there was a ramp back then. No? Okay. No, I think it was all one level. My, my memory serves me correctly. It was, a, it was a single level structure. Wait, the one on 7th in L.A.? No, the one on 6th in Los Angeles back then. It was on 6th Street, the old bus station. The new one's down by Alameda. Yeah, somewhere. yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right, okay. Uh, and this one, he just, where the buses would come in the back, he went out that door. Okay. And took off. Went to a liquor store. Do you know which one? No. Okay. Went to a liquor store. That's where he saw his uh, photo. He then got on an RTD, and I believe the number was 
used to be the number eight bus, I believe. Yeah. Comes down Olympic Boulevard from downtown L.A. Where did he catch it? Do you remember? Downtown L.A. And when he got to Olympic and Soto uh -huh. on the bus, because he had a brother that lived right here on Brannock in East Los Angeles. Brannock near where? Uh, Olympic, just south oh, of Olympic. Okay. So if he just, that's all he was trying to do was get to his brother's house. Right. He gets to his brother's house, the chase is on, you know, he's, he's in the wind. Okay. And when he gets to Olympic at Soto, a passenger who has the morning paper gives it one of these and makes him. Yeah. He gets off the bus right there at Olympic at Soto. It's a red light. He immediately goes to the phone and Richard sees him. Richard then goes down to, I believe, Lorena. Yeah. And he gets off on Lorena in Olympic. Right. Then he starts his run. He ditched the bag, too, didn't he, around there? No. He didn't. He, he well, we recovered a bag inside the uh, Greyhound bus depot. He had a small bag with him that we recovered when he went over a wall. Okay. But he started running because the man had now flagged somebody down. Uh, I believe it was a, from the gas company. Okay. And he saw the truck coming around. Well, now he's running, and he's running through yards over fences. He goes over the 10-foot sound wall of the Santa Ana Freeway, across all the lanes of the Santa Ana Freeway. The guy runs like a gazelle. You know, he was good. And now he's on the north side of the Santa Ana Freeway, running through East L.A., trying to get up. He eventually works his way up to Indiana. He tries stealing a man's car on Indiana, carjacking him. That guy fights him off, moves the car into the fence. Richard runs away, goes around the block to Hubbard. And it's on Hubbard where he then goes ahead and tries carjacking the lady. She starts screaming, and I tell people that there are two kinds of people in East L.A., the good Mexicans and the bad Mexicans. And the good ones all have a pipa or a piece of wood right there by the door, and the bad ones have guns. This was a nice one. He got his peepaw right there, heard his wife screaming, and did what any normal man would have done. He went over there and bit Richard in the head. The neighbors, the Burgoynes and everybody else, hear this screaming, see a neighbor in desperate need of help, and hi. And she starts, they all start migrating over. Richard's been, you know, essentially on a mile and a half, two mile sprint over hill and dale. He gets bipped in the head. He's tired. You got me. He's got no more fight left in him. He's done. And he's taken into custody. Wow, that's fantastic. Then, then, much to the dismay of every deputy assigned here at East L.A. Station, there was a young deputy by the name of Andres Ramirez. He's a rookie. He's probably the only cop in Los Angeles County that didn't know what Richard Ramirez looked like, didn't know what was going on. He's out there. He gets a call. Citizens holding a felony suspect in the business. That's a gimme. You don't have to do any work. They just say, hey, this is what happened. You just write it down. You just hook me, bring him in, book him. So he gets there. Yeah, he tried to carjack my wife. I hit him. Yeah, da, 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 da. So they hook him up, put him in the back seat of the car, call paramedics so they can get his head because uh, he's bleeding. So the paramedics come. They put the turban on him. Here come the blue meanies from LAPD. And a, and a good friend of mine today, the guy's name is George Lopez. Uh -huh. Not the comedian. <laughs> but George Lopez comes up with his cops because where they caught him is just a half a block into the county area. Right. And George, they've been following 911 calls. Guy jumping yeah. over fences, you know, what's going on. So they've been following the calls. His trail. His yeah. trail. And they come up and they say, yeah, that's the guy we're chasing. And he says, get him, guys. They took him out of the back seat of the radio car. Normally or something like that, you talk it over with each other, and then you exchange handcuffs. Yeah. He just says, yeah, that's a guy we've been chased from the city. He says, go ahead and get him. Put him in their car before this guy can say boo, and they hauled him off to Hollenbeck. To Hollenbeck Station. Now, the guys from here were so angry. Andy Ramirez had let the biggest arrest in county history go to the Blue Meanies. He had just married a female deputy. They're still married, uh, Jeannie Blackman. They started calling him Andy Blackman because he didn't sound he didn't deserve to be have a man's name. <laughs>
Oh, my God. And, and I just laughed. I told the guys, I said, hey, if we'd have been chasing them into their city just like that and you'd have had the opportunity, you'd have, you guys would have done the very same thing. The big, when we got to LAPD, when I got the Holland back, what's going on, Big John? Hot damn, it's true. I didn't recognize you. <laughs> 